And away we go. Here is the top five for today. Top five reasons the ACC and the malcontents should reconcile. Of course, presented by TexasBeefHouse.com. And look, if you missed the auction this time, there's always another one co coming around. Make sure to use our promo code 365Sports for a discount at checkout. Number five. Nobody wins in this. The ACC is going to lose its two premier teams. FSU and Clemson are going to have to pay out a ton of money. And at the end of it, nobody still has a plan for how to make everybody whole again. We'll talk about that in a second for FSU and Clemson. But on the ACC's part, there is a slippery slope to letting your two biggest teams leave just because of anger and spite and not working this out. And for Florida State and Clemson, Again, like what is the plan after you get out? There's no defined thing there. So nobody wins in this really if they leave and that has further reaching complications which we'll get to coming up. Number four, to find a way to make the conference better. The best lesson we've learned from Brett Yormark and the Big 12 is, okay, take the play the cards you're dealt but find a way to win at the hand. And he has done that at every turn. He pivoted away from what they were when Texas and Oklahoma left, and then he made the conference better. Well, this would not be the same thing because Florida State and Clemson would be staying in the ACC, but you stay together, you innovate, you find ways to make the conference better, make the conference more valuable, and make your media rights deal better. That's what you have to do. That's what the SEC and Big Ten did. That's what the Big 12 is trying to do. Find a way to be competitive because the problem is whether Florida State and Clemson are in the ACC or not, if the rest of the league stays together, their television contract is not up and they can't renegotiate until 2036 if ESPN does in fact opt in to keep it beyond 2027, which they are expected to do at this time, early next year. So either way, no matter who's in the conference and who's not, if ESPN exercises that clause, that is your money until 2036. That is the deal that you have. All the other conferences will have been able to go to market twice, and maybe three times before you did. And that is not tenable for anyone in that league. That is not good because the world could leave you behind in 12 years. Number three. Better for all of college sports. Look, we're already in a chaotic period of realignment where you've got Stanford, Cal, and SMU in this league anyway, uh, and especially Stanford and Cal playing all these games all over the country. The ACC and the big, like, there are these just mismatched conferences that are traveling all over the place. And, yeah, for football, it's probably not that big of a deal. But for every other sport, it's going to be a big deal. So better for all college sports that there's less disruption at this time. And finding a pathway forward to stick together is better for everyone. Now, that doesn't really matter, the better for everyone thing, because every school, as we've seen with Texas and Oklahoma, or A&M, Nebraska, Missouri, Colorado, when they left the Big 12, or the teams that left the USC, UCLA to the Big 10, you're out for yourself. You have to have your own self-interest at heart first, and that's true, but sometimes that can be catastrophic. As it was in the Big 12 with the Longhorn Network in Texas, they never healed from those wounds until Texas left, really. So don't follow the example of the old Big 12 and capitulate, but also don't be so inflexible that you can't get something done. That's a rule for both sides. Follow that. Number two. The ACC doesn't become the new Pac-12. There's a very good chance if Florida State and Clemson leave, other teams will leave. It could be four, six, eight teams. Then all of a sudden, you're the new Pac-12 and you're scrambling around trying to figure out who you are or even trying to exist. So you don't have to do that. You can find a better way, and I encourage the ACC, Florida State, and Clemson to do that before they really jump full into these lawsuits. Look, if there's no way forward, there's no way forward. If nobody can come to an agreement, we have to accept that and deal with the consequences. But if there is a way forward, find it. God's sakes, find it because it's going to be better. And the biggest thing is for Florida State and Clemson, where are you going? I mean, yeah, I think there'll be interest if they're out in the water, but what kind of money does that mean? Does that mean you close the gap or are you taking a partial share and you're still only making a little bit more money than you would have had you stayed in the ACC? 
and how much are you having to pay out? Like how much money are you making over the next decade really with having to pay out to the ACC and all of that and plus not having a defined home? Look, you could get out, you could win the lawsuits and get out scot-free. Let's just say they win everything. They don't have to pay a fee, they don't have to pay a dollar. In their ultimate pipe dream world, what if they get out and then the phone rings and it's not the conference that they wanted to, wanted to call from? And they wait and they wait and they wait and they have to settle for a conference that they don't want to be in. That, to me, is problematic. And it's something at the end of this that I hope they've considered. I'm sure that there are smart people that have. But right now, they don't know where they're going. And they assume that the big bad SEC or the almighty Big Ten will give them a call. And maybe they will. More than likely, I think if they're in the water, somebody's going to go and try to get them. But maybe it won't happen. And then you've done all this for nothing, and you're still in a pickle. You don't want that. So I encourage the ACC, FSU, and Clemson to find a way to get it done and put like the egos aside and all of this and figure out what's best for all of you together as opposed to two separate or three separate entities. Do that. It's going to be better. It'll work out. And if you can figure something out that gives everybody flexibility and maybe not tied to everything until the middle of the next decade, maybe that works out for everybody. I don't know. Call me an optimist. I believe in, I believe in mankind. Garrett doesn't believe me when I say that at all. Not but really. <laughs> I, believe, I believe that this can get done if cooler heads will prevail. I hope it will. Call me naive. That's fine. But I think this is better for everybody. Just ACC, don't completely capitulate. And Florida State and Clemson, make sure that you show some flexibility and do it. Just make it better for the long term. Just try. Just try. That's going to do it for the show today. Thanks to all my guests. We're back again tomorrow. Connor O'Gara, Josh Neighbors, a cast of thousands. We'll have our great Friday show. I will also hopefully get to hear from the Smokes from Lincoln as Smokey experiences Nebraska for the first time ever in his very, very long fandom. Very long fandom of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. I'm going to say it again. Very long. He's an old man. He's an old man. This is 365 Sports. Have a great night, everybody.